whatever those are, you will see success. I've stayed a million dollars the last 30 years. This is how we do our pitch. The more a salesperson can be focused on selling and not handling everything, the better. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It allows you to create that consistency. Who cannot sell a roofing job? Knocking doors put hair on my chin very quickly. I've been sold, lied, cheated, and deceived by sales reps more often than I wish to admit. It's MLM. <laughs> when you know what they're going to be doing, it will change how you pay which will change how you hire, which will change the talent you look for. How long does it take to build a solid sales system? It's a really good question. Um, I'm clearly biased. I provide one to people. Sure. Okay. Um, mine took me years to develop. There are people, a sales system is needed to scale. I teach and I believe this, whether it's my stuff or not. And I'm curious, I mean, I know you're interviewing me, but the three things, the be, the do, the say, getting the right person, doing the right sales activities each and every day, and saying the right thing at the door, if they're door knocking, overcoming objections and presenting and closing. An individual rep, the B is that heart, right? The goal, the clarity, the vision, and the right attitude to do it, those five profile traits. The do is a, a daily plan built around that individual rep's income goal. Everyone says, oh, you can earn 100 grand. Next question, how? Sell 100 jobs. Next question, how? Work hard. It ends. So we're sending people out to go work hard or put in the time. And you're a fitness guy, right? If you wanted to get a six pack, but you spent eight hours in the gym doing bicep curls, you're not going to get those results. No one's going to say, Dimitri, you're not working hard. Dimitri, you're not putting in the time. But it's doing the right activities to optimize that time of income producing activities, right? And then the say is what they're saying at the door. So how long does it take? Everyone's going to be different. You can get a system and you can employ it and put it to work, or you can create your own that's proprietary, or you can piggyback. But most every person in this industry, with the exception of, of what I'll call the elite, the top performing companies, are really leaving it up to the individual rep in the field to figure it out, and they're given very little direction. Um, but ultimately, if we provide those resources to an individual, again, like forget me for a minute, whatever those are, you will see success. But if any of those systems are broken, you're not getting the right people, and they're not doing the right thing, they're not saying the right thing, growth either stagnates or declines. And I see it all the time. Some people have issues with all three. Others will get, like I met with two companies, guys knocked 60 doors, got 60 inspections, closed zero deals. So clearly the right person doing the right thing, he just needs to learn how to close, right? And then he told me he's not asking for the business. All right, so there's a good start. But same thing, you'll get the right person who can close, but they're the, they're the we call them the lead babies, or drunk on leads. Lead was garbage, send me a new one. You know, they don't follow up. They're not willing to do the work. They just, they basically want you to, to plop them in front of a customer whose wallet's out, right? Like, I'm ready for you. And, and those are, are the three elements of a sales system. So how long does it take? A long time. So let, let's take a business who never have a sales process, like mm -hmm. business owner, yeah. have a five guys crew, always rely on referrals, people just always, you know, neighbors would mm -hmm. come to him. Yep. But now he realizes, all right, the competition is doing something different because I've, I've stayed a million dollars for the last 30 years. Mm -hmm. I can hire one or two salespeople and I'll be $5 million company. Yeah. Where do I start? Yeah. How, like, where does person like that starts? Like, he doesn't have anything, he doesn't know, know if it's five steps, seven step, 10, mm -hmm. 12 steps. He has no clue. He's never owned a whiteboard in his yeah. life. <laughs> so here's, here's some, this is the advice I'd give them. <clears throat> if, you had, if you were not in a position to learn from others and you needed to build this from the ground up, first thing you do is you open a document, Google Docs, Word Doc. You list out high level every step it takes to process a job, okay? So if you're knocking doors, knock the door and, and keep it high level. You know, present, get the inspection, get invited to the house, present, close the deal, update the CRM, meet the adjuster if it's storm, if it's retail, do whatever you do, and then list, list everything out. Then after you have that list documented, you start to backfill all the details in depth. This is how we do our pitch. This is how we present the contingency. This document will become pages and pages and pages and pages long, okay? Then you go from this document and you begin to color code who does what. 
sales do this, then it goes into the office admin. Now you have a standard operating procedure for everybody. So if your office manager's out, someone can stand in. You have a repeatable process listed that will continually evolve and you can edit. You have something you can hold someone accountable to. Hey, you need to go through these steps to do your job. And then as you add people into your operations, because in my opinion, the more a salesperson can be focused on selling and not handling everything, the better. And I know some companies do it start to finish that way and they're great, okay? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's another thing I teach. Um, you can easily say, all right, now we're gonna hire a production guy. So this part of production that sales is doing, we're gonna color code brown. Now this is gonna be this guy named Brian's job. And it allows you to very easily find those weaknesses and have a clear handoff for the process and allows you to create that consistency. It takes time, it takes attention, but it is stupid simple. And I've walked through this process with a lot of people. Um, and everyone does things a little unique and it can be proprietary to your sales process and your, your unique selling proposition and your CRM and everything. But it's just taking the time, brainstorm, mm -hmm. whiteboard, so you can see it. Yep, exactly. And then it, it, it's a living, breathing organism. Nothing's ever done. You're gonna be like, oh, my guys need, you know, we're finding a problem here, so then we fix that problem. And as you know with business, like business is about creating new problems and then finding new solutions, and then you create new problems. And I always say we're one strategy away from the next breakthrough. So what's the big problem in your way? All right, it's so a sales system, create it. And then you're gonna use it, and then you're gonna feel that it's not working great, and then you fix it or optimize it. You already kind of touched on this question, but I still wanna ask, who cannot sell a roofing job? Yeah, who cannot sell a roofing is job? It introverts, extroverts, mm -hmm. or like, just what kind of personality trait yeah. cannot sell a roofing job? <laughs> that's, a, that's a very, very good question. Uh, it, the opposite of those talents, someone who's not confident, someone who doesn't understand a process, you need to understand the process. Can you to learn sell that? Process. Can, can you learn like things like confidence? Yeah. Because I do see people just curious, like for example, in the roofing industry, you have installers and you have sales guys mm -hmm. and you have sales guys bragging in front of installers how much money they make yeah. and you have those roofers like you guys suck I'm gonna yeah. go and do what you do can they here's what I'll say I did I had no I was not a confident person I was very sensitive knocking doors put hair on my chin very quickly you know it, I didn't do well at the beginning it was it was crippling to me so you, it can be it thought. can be now, the reason I teach companies to find that first is because it's a roll of the dice. I've been sold, lied, cheated, and deceived by sales reps more often than I wish to admit because I see hope and, and owners that are tuning in can probably relate. There's a vision and a passion in seeing your team succeed. So when I see you can do it, you can do it, like I'll give you an example, a sales rep sold me and um, he ended up at the end of the year earning about $20,000 of commissions. Okay. He later got his house foreclosed on and his marriage ended. He would have made more money at McDonald's Flippin' Burgers. I can't even tell you how many times I had those moments in his garage. Let's have a beer. What's going on? How can I help? And I over-invested out of wanting to, to fix the broken puppy, as they say. You know, and I wanted him to succeed. I saw it in him. But he didn't have it. So the reason, can people learn it? Yes. Should you expect it? Absolutely not. And that is one reason that I do believe performance standards should be in place so you know whether or not someone's going to succeed. I don't believe in part-time salespeople, um, that with very rare exception. And, and can it be learned? Yes. The people that will fail have no confidence, don't have a process to follow, they are not confident, or they don't know how to ask for the business. Or thick-skinned. Or they're not thick-skinned. You know, they just, they cripple. They'll go home and be like, you know, it's the worst day ever, and they can't crawl back out of that being knocked down. Love it. Let's get back to the business owner who's mm -hmm. never had a sales guy in his life. Yep. Maybe he's just a crew, sell himself. He sees that other companies are doing in his market something different. They're around 10, 12, 20 sales guys. Yeah. I see those guys all the time reaching out to me. I'm yep. pretty sure reaching out to you. How does owner operator like that hires his first sales guys? Because here's the problem I see, and guys, if it's you, I want to hear from you. Comment below, please. If it's you, if I'm describing you right now, comment below that it's hard and we're nailing nail on the head right now. Um, those guys, I personally feel they have moral issue, like they have moral dilemma. They hate middle guys. Mm -hmm. They want to do it all. They think that sales rep is one of the worst 
person, people alive, because he's not producing anything. Like I'm the owner, I'm installed. Like only installers should be selling jobs. Yeah. And owner operators have this inside hate towards, they call it sales organization roofing companies. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, oh, you're not a real roofer. Yeah. You're just like this big company, you hire a whole bunch of sales guys, sub and work out. And I see that hate, but sadly, they're hurting their, their own business because now, you know, you cannot just hate sales organization and hire <laughs> sales rep. Right. It's mentally and morally hard. Yeah. How do you work with someone like that? Yeah, that's a good question. First thing is organization. What I find is the, the reason people fa fail, um, meaning the owner bringing new people on, there's a lack of clarity. Usually the first salesperson doesn't stick because there's so much of that learning curve from an operational standpoint. The hardest thing when you're an owner operator and you've reached max capacity is you are in reactive mode all day long. You're putting out fires, you're doing everything. So you're thinking to yourself, if I just hire someone, he can do it all and then I'm back in this. But it doesn't work like that. Or they make the mistake, I'll just find someone seasoned and they'll lead and grow the team. Never has worked. I, I've never seen it work. They need clear direction on how things are done. And as hard as it is. And, and they don't know it because correct. they've never so, sell. The and that's why you need to document what you're doing. I just did a, a little Instagram TV, TV video the other day sharing about owners that often outsell salespeople because they have the experience, they have the knowledge, and they have the confidence, and there's just a different level of clout to sit down and, and, and be And we like, suck at sales. We, we, we sell differently. Like Correct. The Correct. owners, people, people will buy from the owner because he's just yeah. the owner. Yep. It's a completely different dynamic. You can't <laughs> transmute that. Exactly. You show up and he's like, oh, you're the owner of the business. Here's my checkbook. Yeah. People love it. Like, it's much harder to sell for the sales mm -hmm. rep. You cannot, I mean, owners can, can do trade deals. You can adjust your price. Yeah. <laughs> you can do anything you want. Yeah. It is. It, 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 I hear owners reaching out a lot. I'm really good at selling. I don't need this for me. It's for the salespeople. So, um, gaining that clarity. So first, the, the one step that people skip, they go straight into give me an ad, let me run it and hire people. And the first thing that I do, so I have a program called How to Build Your Dream Team. And it's just ground up. And it's the, the first part's not sexy. You gotta have a sales process. Again, I walk, the process I just walked, walked you through, I teach them, just outline everything, okay? Because when you know what they're gonna be doing, it will change how you pay which will change how you hire, which will change the talent you look for. Because guys, I, I never got a roof order right. I mean, I am, people make fun of my videos because I'll try to do math. And they're like, hey dummy, you dropped a zero. I'm like, I know. I literally was in the same math class four years in a row. <laughs> you know, I'm not the guy to stay organized on a job. I love working with the customers. I love creating an incredible experience for them. Um, I love sitting on the job and working the job, but in terms of like, you know, getting my order right, I, I just started to overorder everything until we offloaded all this stuff. But um, to have that process, what do you need your sales rep to do? Are you in a position to have them just sell? Are they going to be doing the, their work orders, and material orders? Are they running to get their own permits? Are they in charge of managing their job? And so many owners look at trying to find someone to run everything, but what happens is you're hiring someone and trying to train them to sell. You're training them to become a roofing expert to put together an order form, and then you're putting all of your liability in their plate and saying, please, Inspect the job, make sure it's done right. What do they know? Right? So it, you need when you just high level, even if you only have two seconds over lunch, grab a napkin. What is my salesperson gonna do? Okay? Step one, list it out. Are they in charge of the process start to finish or not? Step two, are they gonna be in charge of, of the profitability of the job? If they are, that's gonna change your pay. Then you should pay them off the profit. If they're not gonna be in charge of profitability, so if it's retail, you have a set price structure. If it's Storm, if you have a supplement division and they're just responsible for bringing it in, don't pay off the profit if they're not in charge of profitability. You want to incentivize the behavior you want. So step one outline, step two, figure out how to pay them. Then you run the ad, okay? Then you learn to interview and then you bring them on board and then you make sure you're, you keep a pulse. Don't just send them off. Keep a pulse, check in and create standards and check in with that person. And the best way, in my opinion, to get a person to stick is to, day one, build them their plan based on their income goal. No one cares about you. No one cares about me. What's in it for me? I. That's what's going on in our customer's mind and our sales rep's mind. So when we invest in them achieving their vision, they make more sales. You make more sales. More customers are served. Everybody's happy. 
So that's how I get people to, to stick around and build that, the C word, culture. It's like thrown around, it's like the new, the new wave of C things, word. right? The culture word, you gotta have strong culture. I agree with this, by the way. Um, it's just a buzzword lately. And the culture is their success. Love it. Uh, best sales commission that you recommend find that works almost universal if there's one yeah that oh man so here's the deal I've been getting this a lot and, and the reason I have to put a disclaimer on this I had a guy that was working with me one-on-one -on -one. he asked me this question I said I can't give you this advice till we go through your books we go through his books I find out he's 30 grand in the hole for the year small company a few million a year I say step one fire me do not pay me anymore step two get this straight then come back this was six years ago maybe five years ago I don't know um, he just posted on one of my Facebook ads being like, dude, I'm rocking it, which is great. So the reason I use this disclaimer, you can't pick a, pick a pay plan out of the book, okay? Generally speaking, profit, I would say a starting of 25 to at the high, 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 high end, 45% of profit. I think the 50% profit is dated, unrealistic. I've seen your videos on it, I agree. Percent of, of um, uh, but how do you split profit? You have to open the books. You have mm -hmm. to talk about it. Yeah. What's the like? The reason I hate it so much because you, who's the owner? Like, why no. me and you sitting and talking about profit? And why do you work for me? Agreed. Would, just agreed. It's just upside down. It, it it is. And the other factor I want to touch on that. The other factor just before we get lost on it is W two versus ten ninety nine. Mm -hmm. You have about seventeen and a half percent added expenses on a W two employee. That must factor into how you pay. Right? Some companies are providing trucks, laptops, incentives, 401k, all needs to factor in. Back to the profit thing, when you pay profit, you, do, you are opening the books and the first thing uh, that people think, they see the bottom number of profit and that sales rep thinks, I could be making that. Now, it's a false hope because it's not all lining the pockets of the owner. And it, to some degree, you're, you're training your competitors. Um, I do think that profit only makes sense if the sales rep is responsible for profitable jobs. If you remove that responsibility, then they should be paid off the top. $10,000 job, 10% commission, $1,000, easy for everyone to calculate. The hard thing in this industry is faith. No, there's tra I mean, what we'll, I'm sure we'll talk about this at some point. Transparency with a company, how many commission disputes have you seen you know there's there's all the time and when you just have a really simple pay plan you get paid x dollars up front x dollars on the back end here's the top line here's your percent there's no question i collected the check i handed it to you i know the amount we can calculate it versus the profit side it's a can of worms but you said that you recommend profit if they're responsible for profit I believe in incentivizing the behavior that we wish to. to but see, in an insurance restoration world, uh, it's not up to them. It's how much insurance pays. It's not. There's not many things the sales guys can do. There, and I'm not disagreeing with that. I agree that there is not a lot. Retail, for example, my retail clients, they may, the sales rep may be in charge of profit. If they are responsible for driving profitable jobs, they should be rewarded for that. If they are not responsible, I'm not saying one's better than the other, by the way. If I'm not responsible for driving profitable jobs, like you mentioned with insurance, some companies have their sales reps responsible for supplementing, and they're very hands off. They call it the cradle to grave model. You're the sales rep, you're going to sell the job, meet the adjuster, put in the work order, sit on the job, supplement it, follow up, collect. You deserve to be paid on the profit. You're doing a boatload of work. I don't like that model personally. I think the salesperson should be focused on selling. But if you end up with a supplement company or a supplement division or someone that's monitoring the jobs, because a new person, by the way, how many jobs? Every owner is watching, yep, I've produced a job I lost money on or there was no profit because this person doesn't know any better. So it just depends on the type of the structure of the organization. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Yeah. What's your take on the sales manager who takes percentage of the guys under him? Like I've seen some awards when people claim like, oh, I did $10 million a year. Like, how did you tell him? And then he has like five guys under him. Like, yeah. it's MLM. <laughs> it, okay, thank you. All right, let's get, let's get here. The definition of multi-level marketing. I have not, I've seen this work, by the way. I'm not, again, 
I always, if it's not broken, don't fix it. If you're doing things ethically, there's no need to change. If you're doing things that even make you think at night, I shouldn't be doing this, I don't feel good about it, and there's a question in the pit of your stomach, you need to make a change. So now that we've got the disclaimers out of the way, I, I am not a huge fan of that like micro team lead model of bringing people in. I don't think a sales manager like, you know, counting, I sold this amount in this year. You, you may not have, you know, did, were you responsible for it? Maybe, I don't know. If you developed a sales system that produced it, I think some credit is due for this, but to take credit for someone's sales that they did on their own just because you were their boss, different story. Um, I personally believe in an ideal world, and this is not possible for every company, in an ideal world, a sales manager does not sell. It is a conflict of interest. I have been in that position where I was, as a newer sales manager, I was still having to sell to support the office. And I had these, customer needs me, excuse me, my, my sales guys need me and their customer thing, or my customers need me. I have to make a choice. Both way loses. Then they, they start wondering, are you cherry picking leads? Are you being greedy? A sales manager should sell for the shortest period of time to then just focus and invest on the team and in my opinion be rewarded with a with compensation about the growth of the company where the company's goal and vision is aligned with the sales reps compensation most owners are too generous and they pay too much so the sales manager has gets to earn what he or she wants to far before the company's objectives are met how many sales people can sales manager manage efficiently <laughs> five ten like what's the Oh man, that's a good question. Or is uh, it based on volume? It, it's based, I, I don't know if there's a fixed number. You know, everyone is different, every team is different. The biggest thing is how many can you support in the field? If you're running like seven offices across and you have one sales manager that's gonna see them once in a while, it, it's tough, I've done it, it didn't work that well. The times that we had- What's you know, ideal perfect? Ideal perfect, I would say reasonably 20 would be at the top end. If you're 20 sales. 20 sales guys, if you're just a sales manager, a I think that's very reasonable. Do you think that's too much? Uh, I was thinking about more like five, 10. Oh, wow. Okay. I mean, if you have volume, because I mean, think about all the work orders, training and stuff like yeah. that. I mean, I think it can be done up yeah. to 20, but then, I mean, like I always have numbers in my business, like sure. how many files can person touch in a week? Mm -hmm. Like for my supplements, for me, it's like, I have to have a yeah. number, 50. Because I have to know like when am I hiring new person? Yep. Because I can't just come and say, okay, this month you have 100 yeah. files, get it done. Yeah. It's like no, like my videographers, they have uh, you know limit how many mm -hmm. videos they can do per day. Uh, sales rep, how many appointments can you, you can run mm -hmm. per day? Sales manager, how many yeah. you know work orders you can approve if that's your job approving this, work orders? This is a semantics thing because if we're talking a sales manager that's handling work orders, not 20 guys. But you, but you still, like, if sales guys are bringing it to you, like, sales managers mm -hmm. still have to approve, like, you know, other checks. Like, you yeah. know, there should be checklists. There are. Yeah. The way, so what, what our process was set up that the sales manager was responsible for, for sales, people, and volume in bringing deals in. Then we had an operations manager that reviewed all the jobs, and then that went to, a, op, the operations guy was also the production guy. Okay. So he did all the production in-house, scheduling, finding the crews, auditing all the labor orders, work orders, material orders, all that. And then we had guys in the field that managed the actual installations, and then we're running around. So through those, that's why I said 20. If a sales manager is in charge of all of it, you're gonna, you're gonna die <laughs> if you're having to run production. So I guess it goes to the definition of what that sales manager is doing. What's your take on uh, salaries or base pay? I don't like it. You don't like it? I don't like Not it. Not even for training? Mm -mm. I, I believe that compensation should be tied to behavior that should be rewarded. You'll, you'll, every part of compensation in this industry should be tied to the performance that we are looking for from that individual person. Um, I think it could be earned, but I've watched most companies are not in a position financially to afford to pay a base pay. They end up in deep financial trouble because they'll hire people who don't perform because they, they have comfort. There's growth and discomfort. You can provide incentives, in my opinion, tied to new deals coming in so they get advances on pay. This I am in favor of. What I'm not in favor of is saying, hey, Dimitri, come sell for me. Here's 50 grand a year and a truck. Because why do you need to sell? You have, a, you have your bills paid, you've got everything, all of your needs met. 
what I have found is that more often than not, and I'm, I, the, your, your mileage may vary, as they say, um, complacency happens. Mm -hmm. So pressure is a good thing, and it keeps the hopper full. As a business owner, starting at the next month, August 1, you're starting at zero dollars. I mean, I know you've got a residual right, model as a roofer. Y you start day one at zero dollars, and you're looking at your month. The sales rep, in my opinion, should feel the same way because what happens is a sales rep, when they meet, the, depending on the market and living expenses, it's usually between fifty dollars and $90,000 a year, they ease off the gas. They're like, my bills are paid, my needs are met, I don't have to work Saturdays. They, they get comfortable. So I like to use a pay plan that incentivizes monthly performance. I'm all for paying very well, but I think that, that pay should be um, earned. And I believe that when we tie the pay to the behavior we're looking for, this is how we create the environment of, of crazy growth. In the story of, of Jim Collins, but I think it was Jim Collins, Good to Great, mm -hmm. shares a story where there was a, an office culture and people, they were wasting like thousands of dollars a month on printer ink and printer paper. And they put up memos, don't do this anymore. So what happens? And nothing changes, right? So then they put up another memo in an official email, stop printing if you're not gonna go to the printer nothing changes. So what they did is they said, all right, we have to get smart. So we're going to put a button on the printer that says accept print job. So when I'm at my cubicle and I hit print, I have to walk over and hit accept print job. So this is manipulating our environment to get the behavior that we want. That's why I believe that all pay plans should be like that button. How do we create the environment to train the proper sales behavior that will lead to the reward, which is them bringing in sales and them earning a lot of money? I see. The only problem I see with that is we have to be competitive with other industries. Mm -hmm. And I personally believe that we are actually losing a lot of potential sales guys because mm -hmm. nobody wants to go commission only yeah. if they've never had one before. So if you, and here's the sad part for me. Like I see talented guys working, you know, at LA Fitness making 50,000 a year where I know they will be making 100,000 here. But in Russia we have this proverb is, a uh, small bird in a hand better than big bird in the sky. Mm -hmm. And uh, what it means is like if, if I have something that's guaranteed but there's no risk, mm -hmm. I'll keep it. So yeah. we ha why do people keep you know, fast food jobs and they're hard working yeah. or like grocery jobs? I mean those jobs pay 30, 40,000 a year but it's yeah. guaranteed. So now you telling me that I can make 100K, how can I believe you? Can you guarantee me 25,000 salary and yeah. some bonus structures because when you do that now I want to believe it yeah. if you don't I mean and on top of that we don't have a reputation of paying people this no this is <laughs> true so if I may adjust if you pay a salary it needs to be not enough for them to be comfortable true like ba base yes. pay like like bare minimum I agree with you I agree people yeah. will be, get a come the same thing like on my YouTube channel when you're in a position to provide advice to lots of people, that's a lot of weight on your shoulders to give bad advice. And there are companies that can and are in a position to offer a small base that have experience. They have experience hiring. They know who to look for. They have a system in place to get people to stick around. And they're financially healthy that they can take that risk. My concern of saying pay a $20,000 salary, like two guys in that uh, <clears throat> reached out recently, young company, like, hey, I'm going to hire, I'm going to pay a salary. I'm like, dude, it's your second year in business. It's like your third sales rep. This could be very costly. This is a significant bill. I don't know if that makes sense in your particular circumstance. But the thing about it, um, you know, $20,000 a year, it's very small. For most companies, I mean, you're talking about 300 bucks. By the way, yeah. when I, I hired people 120000 a year. Mm -hmm. You know, if that person does not work out, you don't have, like, you're not out of 120K. Four weeks, you're out. Yeah. Or two weeks. You need to have the structure. If you know, like, at four weeks, it's make or break. But the, the, the problem without that structure, and that's why I mentioned before performance standards, if you're paying someone, they need to be bringing things in mm -hmm. to warrant it. This is about back into that organization and the process. So if you hire someone on a salary, yes, you need the four-week Mark, you need to know, and this needs to be agreed upon early in advance. I'm hiring you, Dimitri, you're on board, 25 grand a year. This is what you get. In exchange, you're bringing in X deals a month. And if you're not, you're on probation. You don't hit it. Sorry, you're gone. It's nothing personal. It just means it didn't work. 
And if you can do that, great. But so many owners put their heart, they care too much, they pay too much, they see potential at a higher, um, to a higher degree than that person is capable of realizing at that particular time in their life, and they end up getting in the hole because they invest. And then they're, they, they put in that emotion, they're hopeless. I need this guy to work out. I need him to work out. I'll just give him another two months. Oh, his grandma died. Oh, this happened. I mean, come on, it's sales. We've heard all the sob stories in the book. We all have them. Life happens. But is there a time and a place to do that? Yes. What I also know in this business is I do not believe that there's a one-size-fits-all answer for everything. What kind of tips do you have for business owners who sell from experience uh, just because they've been in the roofing business for 10, 15 years, but they have no sales experience? Yeah. What kind of tips do I have for them? Yeah. If, they're, if what's working for them is working, keep doing it. <laughs> Don't fix what ain't broken, but it's going to be very difficult to train that to someone else. A, a lot of times, um, I found those guys being the cheaper. Like for example, I have a client in Chicago. Mm -hmm. For ten years, he never raised his price, and I come to him like, dude, how much are you paying for the phone? Like thousand bucks. What that phone was five years ago? Five hundred bucks. How much is your truck? Sixty yeah. grand. What was it five years ago? Thirty grand. Mm -hmm. And but but he he was trying to convince me that yeah. that that's the going rate, and I'm like. We're getting this ABC beacon, you know, <laughs> price increases seven times a year. Yeah. But that roofer will never raise the price because he does not know how to overcome that objection. Mm -hmm. so how do you teach or how do you learn how to stay competitive? Because for them, it's coming in, here's my price, leave. And yeah. they, they only can sell if they are the cheapest. It, actually, their goal is to be the cheapest. Yeah. That's in their mind. How, how you get the job. Yeah. So you hit the word mind. is a mindset shift. I, I see it a lot. I see people who either don't want to adapt, aren't comfortable adapting. As you mentioned, owners are anti-sales. They have a bad taste. They think salespeople are, are slimy. They think that they're greedy. They think that they're entitled. Um, it's people, of course. Are there the ones that fit that? Yes. But in as with anything, if you're, I watched your video on, on being an overweight owner. Okay. I lost 30 pounds, the 30 pounds I'd gained while I was in the industry. I, where, where did, where, where I know, 30 pounds on this <laughs> frame. I'm five foot three. I had 30 pounds on me. Wow. It, it, it was... Uh, was it valley or what? Oh, yeah. It was just a little butterball, man. <laughs> roll me off the roof. Um, it, it all starts with a mindset shift. If you want to lose weight, you will not achieve what you want to happen if you do not have it in your mind with clarity. Okay. Um, Rob Deerdeck, you mentioned my, my favorite influencers. He's more recent. I listened to a podcast of his on the Jordan Harbinger show. He literally sat down and created the life he wanted. He wrote it, he identified it, and then he started to build it. And then he started, which I still do to this day, I track every one of my days, qualitative scores in key areas, and I see the relationships between them and then I optimize. But I cannot do that without clarity. So for an owner who wants to grow, they need to have a mindset shift around what they want to achieve and why. They need to have clarity on where they're going, and then they start to need, they need to acquire the new skill sets and become a new person who is capable of doing that. All of the resources are there. I'm not the only one providing information to this industry. Mm -hmm. Go find the person that you resonate with, get their material, use it. All you need from one program, again, forget me for a minute, is one nugget. You get that one nugget that helps you break through, pays for itself with the amount of money you can earn in this industry. So find that piece. Get clarity as to why, and then you need to build a process and start testing it and have fun with the journey. That needs to be your mission. Write it on your board. I'm going to create a sales process to reach this standard. How do I do it? Where do I need to go? Is it pricing? Is it presenting? Is it how you prepare your estimates? Right? Is it your follow-up? Is it how you close? But you need to find what that, as I say, we're always one strategy away from our next breakthrough. What's the one strategy? Go pursue it. Document it. Prove it. Now you can bring people in and say, guys, gals, I got it. Come on board with me. I'm going to show you how I've done it because i got a process. Love it. Um, there's a lot of programs now. Mm -hmm. I see more and more sales coaches sure. uh, rising up. Do you see a lot of bad advice? Do you, can you recognize someone who, who has a good stuff? I don't know if you're familiar with Rodney Webb. We use mm -hmm. Rodney Webb over the years. Sure. Good, bad, ugly. Like how to find a sales coach. Yeah. Because you keep saying, like, don't use me. Use someone else. And I have people calling me. like, Dimitri, yeah. this guy wants $30,000. Yeah. And I'm like, Please don't do it. Mm -hmm. That $30,000 will be a big mistake and it yeah. will cost you because I actually know the person. Like mm -hmm. when people call you, mm -hmm. do you tell them, don't do it, don't do it? Yes. I, I would be surprised what you comments see people. overpriced sales coaches in the industry? Yes. 
And I'll tell you, my, like, I came to market with programs that an individual rep can purchase. I have a 30-day money-back guarantee. Love it. I stand behind it. Have I refunded people? Yes. You know the number one reason? I didn't make it in the industry. Should I refund them? No, that's not my fault, but I do because I stand behind it. You reach out in that 30 days, I buy it back from you. Mm. I make, like for my owners, the teams, I, I'm running a training for a company that's doing 75 million a year tomorrow morning. My program is the same rate for a company that is doing, and affordable, for a company that's doing a few million a year. And they're gonna make it back in one sale. So to me, I have structured my business in a way to provide things that I don't, I truly don't believe I have any competitors, Dimitri. I give away tons of training. I give strategies. When I talked about that formula, the BDU say, that's the backbone of my dashboard. Here's how to find the right people. Here's the daily plan built around their income goal. I give you all the marketing material to use, whether you're self-generating leads or they're inbound. I teach you how to knock doors, how to overcome objections and close. It is lightning fast boot camp to get an, anyone who's the right fit in there and succeeding in the field with boatloads of testimonials. And I do it because I, when I was working one-on-one -on -one with people, I could only impact a few people. That's it. You had to have three grand a month. I, I had a client, by the way, outside of roofing. It was a $300,000 client for me. He paid me five to 6,000 a month over the course of five years. Wow. And he, he, he kept me on board because he earned it. But at those rates, I can help a handful of people, both from time and bandwidth and affordability. So my advice to find the right person, you'll find a golden nugget in lots of places. If you're not confident replicating a process at the door or your team isn't, you shouldn't use it. Is there things I don't agree with of an approach? Of course. I have a value-based approach. My, my goal is to help a rep be him or herself. So think of it like this. I use this analogy. If I sat down with seven of the world's best chefs, I give them steak, potatoes, butter, salt, pepper. How many dishes am I going to get? Seven. Seven different delicious dishes, reverse sear, grilled, you know, um, sous vide, whatever it is. But those chefs know the fundamentals and they have the ingredients. So my style is to provide those, in, those ingredients and the fundamentals in the form of formulas that anyone coming into this industry, regardless of sales experience or not, can apply those and mix them together and bring a version of themselves confidently in the field. And if I can help that rep do that, the likelihood of them sticking and succeeding is much higher than, you have no idea how many guys reach out to me behind their owner's back saying, my pitch my company's teaching me isn't working. The program they're using makes me feel like a used car salesman. I got three yesterday. Same words, used car salesman. So to find the right approach is the one that resonates with you, that you can replicate and that works. And truthfully, anything will be better than nothing, in my opinion, with very rare exception. And then you can learn and modify. But the biggest thing is just being able to replicate. And that's the thing that I hear the most feedback on is it's not working. It doesn't feel like me. It feels sleazy. And that's going to cause turnover. Because for a rep to stick, they need to have success. Roofing sales is the drug, your first hit's free. And it hits the commission. If they don't have that first, they don't have a quick win, they lose hope in themselves, they lose hope in the industry, they lose hope in the program, and they're gone. And most, you know, I had a rep that was struggling, 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 picked up, who's a former um, football player, collegiate level, Big Ten University. He, all of a sudden, after like 12 weeks of struggling, brings all these deals in, and I sit down, I'm like, Jordan, You've got about 50,000 in commissions you raked in. He goes, I'm not seeing it. And he quit and he took a desk job for the reasons you shared, security and stability wow. at, a, at a bank. So I, I, whatever helps people um, enjoy their work that invests in the rep, him or herself, that's the one to go with, in my opinion. Right. I want to add uh, to this, and for those who's watching this channel, just I have to add it because we have so many people, you know, Domatica, Lee Haight, Sam Taggart, uh, I mean, Rodney Webb, pool grows pretty big. I would say go with the person that you can relate to the most, because here's the deal. Some people think that it's easy on social media to fake. You mm -hmm. can't fake it. Camera, it not only adds, adds 20, 30 pounds, but it's actually, it exposes you. Like you can't fake like on, on the camera, like you think you can, like in the interview, when you start producing videos on a regular basis, you're showing people who you are. Mm -hmm. 
And if you feel like, you know, like if you tell me that you like my videos, it tells me something about you. If my content resonates with you, it tells me that you probably, you could be immigrant, you hardworking guy, you probably have, you know, installing background because that's who I am. We connect with people like us. And when people call me and say, Dimitri, you know, Lee Hate was once $30,000, should I do it? Or $50,000, whatever the price tag, $60,000. And I usually ask them, well, first of all, even if you're asking me this question, you're not confident. Yeah. You know, like, ask yourself why you're not confident. Ask yourself why you need second opinion to make that decision. And I'm not against Lee Hate. Like, Lee Hate helped people, and I've seen the testimonials. I've seen guys who give Lee Hate credit or Anton Delmedico credit. I'm not against them. But when you make that big purchase decision, when, or like Sam Taggart, you know, whatever he charges, like 60 grand. I'm not gonna say that Sam is a bad guy. He is a great guy, but he's not for everyone. So you can, you should feel that myself, Adam here, we're different. We have different personalities. No, not, we're not better, we're just different. Yeah. Because if you hire wrong personality, just like marriage, you know, yeah. there's a lot of beautiful girls, but, but they all have different, they're all crazy in different ways. But you'll have to spend the life with the one for the rest of your yeah. life. And you have to be very careful just because she's beautiful, you know, yeah. does not mean that you should marry. You know, my five-year-old son told me the other day, he, he, he said, I'm going to marry the most beautiful girl. And my mom, uh, my wife goes like, what about ugly? Girls are like, mom, all girls are beautiful. I'm just going to marry the most beautiful one. Like this guy, he figured out. <laughs> yeah, so he's like, but I'm gonna marry the most beautiful. So the thing is, guys, look at their personalities, look who you resonate the most because we're all different, mm -hmm. and only hire people that you already know it's fit for you. Yeah. I firmly believe, like, if I know, like, Rodney Webb, he is my idea, like Marcus Sheridan, mm -hmm. I know those people of the camera, of their keynotes. I don't need to call someone like, is Marcus Sheridan worth it? I'm just gonna wire him money and bring him to the conference. Yeah.